there's really three beliefs that humans must have to do anything. One, you must believe that it is humanly possible. So is it possible for me to jump off of this roof and survive? No one's ever done it. Eh, okay, maybe that ain't it. So it has to be humanly possible. It has to be personally possible. Is it possible for me? Where I am, the work I put in, all of that. Is it possible for me? And the big one that I think a lot of us miss out on leveraging is, will it be worth it? In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, this, I, I know, I say this a lot, folks, and you're going to get tired of me saying it, but I love saying it because it's so exciting, right? The ability for me to jump on a connection with the internet the way it is these days and to be able to take these tools and to connect with people literally all over the world is so much fun. I absolutely love it. And today I've got another fantastic guest we're bringing back with you here today. If you are an aspiring entrepreneur, like if you have caught the bug and you're like, you're trying to dive in and figure out how do you even begin? Where do you begin? Maybe you have a, a feeling that you want to launch a podcast. Well, that's exactly the kinds of things we're going to be talking about today. Today, I'm excited to bring to you Kevin Palmieri. Kevin is the CSO and founder of the Next Level University. He's the co-host of the Next Level University podcast, which is ranked globally in the top 100 podcasts. And if you, being a podcaster, I know how important that is, which is super significant. So congratulations on Thank that. You. They are rapidly approaching. By the time this episode get released, I'm sure they'll probably get beyond the 1700 episode mark within this podcast. And once again, being a podcaster, I know how much work and effort goes into creating episodes. So once again, congratulations on that as well. They've surpassed 1 million listens. They also have reached over 170 plus countries. He also has a, a secondary podcast. It's also called, or it is called the Podcast Growth University. So uh, I've been actually binging a lot on that. As I mentioned, I'm personally trying to get better at being a podcaster and for him to share his wisdom, how to get started, how to get better. I've actually been picking up tips and I would recommend you go check that, at, that out as well. He loves helping podcasters grow, scale, and monetize their shows, which it's super cool. I can't wait to dig in. I'm going to be learning just as much as you are here, the listeners. It's going to be super fun. But without any further ado, Kevin, man, welcome to the show. Randy, thank you so very much for the wonderful intro. I truly hope I can live up to the reputation you have created for me. And uh, I very much appreciate all the kind words. I, I genuinely mean that from the bottom of my heart. I just appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. As I mentioned, 1,700 episodes. You are very busy. We talked. You've got another uh, recording coming up as soon as we get done here today. So I want to jam-pack as much information and as much content and as much knowledge and wisdom that comes along with uh, creating the podcast and launching the, the uh, business, the Next Level University, and all that kind of stuff. So mm. first off, start off with take as much time as you'd like. Let's get a little bit of a backstory. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself, uh, kind of where you were, how you gotten into the podcasting, the business, and where you are now. Yeah, I always start from the very beginning. I was raised by my mom and my grandmother. I didn't know my dad. I didn't meet my dad until I was 27. So obviously that plays a, a role in, in someone's life. So that was a big thing for me, obviously, and I'm still working with and through that, I'm sure, in, in some ways. Lower middle class, didn't have a lot of money. I remember having discussions many times of how are we going to make rent this month? That was something that was fairly common, unfortunately. In high school, I didn't want to learn. I didn't like school. So the last thing I was going to do, Randy, is go to college. So I decided pretty early in life, I'm not going to go to college. That's just not for me. And I got my first real big boy job pumping gas at the local gas station when I was, I don't know, maybe 17, 18. So all my friends went off to college and I was getting up at five o'clock in the morning, going and working from six to two. And then that was it. That was my career at the time. From there, I did many other odd jobs, personal trainer, truck driver, forklift operator, construction, HVAC, on-call firefighter for a very, very, very short amount of time. 
And then in my early 20s, I got this very unique opportunity in an industry called weatherization. So we would go into large buildings, usually schools, and it was our job to make those buildings more energy efficient through retrofitting, insulation, doors, windows, that type of stuff. So I went from making $15 an hour as a construction worker to, I believe, the first job I worked at, I was making $60 an hour. So in my mind, everything I did up to this point was the right choice. I just 4 x my income. Uh, this is going to be great. This is going to be amazing. I'm, this is awesome. I'm going to be super successful. And I don't think there was a lot of people that would have bet Kevin was going to be very successful, including myself. So if we fast forward a couple of years, I am... 25, 26, and I have everything you could imagine you'd want. From the outside looking in, my life is amazing. I just competed in and won a bodybuilding show. So I was in the best shape ever that I'll ever be in. My girlfriend was a model. I had a sports car, high paying job, new apartment, all of that stuff. One day, my girlfriend came to me and said, Hey, I'm leaving. She had wanted to move across the country. To California and chase her dreams. And I held her back from chasing her dreams because I was so afraid of being left behind and not being successful if we moved out there. I finally felt like I had certainty in my level of success and I didn't want to start that over again. I felt like I had gotten beyond what I thought was possible for me, honestly. So she ended up leaving me. And that was my initial rock bottom where who's going to love me? I feel broken. I'm way more depressed than I think I am for sure. I'm dealing with anxiety. I'm having some mental health struggles that I didn't really understand. Who's going to love this version of Kev? Well, let's worry about that later. Let me try to make as much money as humanly possible because if I make more money, I think most of these problems will disappear. So the next year, I said, I'm going to make as much money as humanly possible. I spent 10 months living on the road because most of our contracts were in other states. And we got to the end of the year and I made $100,000 with no college degree. I was 26 at this point. And I expected everything to change. I thought I was going to be confident. I thought my self-worth was going to increase. I thought I was going to believe in myself. And none of that really happened. I didn't really feel any different. My bank account was different. I was not different. So I had a moment where I realized for most of my, li my life, I have lived unconsciously. Don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing, just kind of going through the motions. The opposite of unconscious is hyperconscious. So in 2017, I started a podcast called The Hyperconscious Podcast. That's where all this started for me. Fell in love with podcasting as I fell out of love with my job. I don't want to do it anymore. I've reached the pinnacle. I don't want to spend my life on the road. I'm, I'm over it. I don't want to do it. I want to do this podcasting thing. So by the end of that next year, I found myself sitting on the edge of a bed contemplating suicide. Because I just felt trapped. I felt like I'm never going to get a job like this again. I'm never going to make this amount of money again. I'm never going to have this certainty again, the significance again. I got lucky to get this opportunity. I didn't have a plan A. I didn't really have a plan B. I don't know if there is a plan that comes after this. What am I going to do? Am I gonna be, I'm going to be a podcaster. That's what I'm going to do with my life. There's no way. There's no way that's going to work. So here I am sitting on the edge of a bed having these really, really dark thoughts. And I ended up texting Alan, who was my friend at the time, but he's now my business partner and the co-host of Next Level University. And I explained to him what was going on and in his wisdom, which you have already heard or you will hear because he was on this podcast recently. He said, over the last couple of years, Kev, your awareness has changed a ton, but your environments have remained the same. I think it's time for you to change your environment. So in 2018, I ended up leaving my job and I went full-time into podcasting, speaking, coaching. And when I say full-time, I mean full-time effort with zero results for the first several years. And then now we're 1,700 episodes in. We just crossed a million listens and a million dollars in the business last week. And it's now I get to do this every day, which is honestly a dream come true. There's a lot of pressure that comes with it. There's a lot of overwhelm that comes with it, but it's definitely privileged because we got the opportunity to, to choose that pressure and overwhelm. So I love that part of the story. And that's where I hope to keep unpacking it even a little bit further. Of course. So those who 
uh, listen to Alan's episode, which will be coming out very soon, uh, depending on uh, when you're listening to this episode. So if you look for search for Alan Lazarus, they are partners in the Next Level University. So the biggest and one of the biggest things I love about the two of you as partners is the contrast of personalities. <laughs> it's like <laughs> night and day difference. It's almost, yeah. yeah. So can you talk about that a little bit as far as I, I know sometimes people will think, well, I need to go out and get a partner. I need to find a partner. How important it is to do it by myself or I'm going to just do it by myself. Obviously, I'm trying to, to launch and grow my podcast by myself. But talk about that dynamic between the two of you. Yeah, I I wouldn't be where I am or who I am today without Alan. I'm certain of that. I would not be nearly as successful externally. I would not be nearly as fulfilled internally. It just kind of made sense. One of the reasons it made sense is because we were born and raised in the same town. I went to middle school with him. I went to high school with him. I knew him for a long period of time. Both of us grew up without fathers. His father passed away in a car accident when he was young. I didn't have a dad. So that was something. We were both raised by women. And we both had this deep belief that self-improvement would have made our lives infinitely better if we had access to it sooner. We didn't necessarily have the best guidance. And we paid for that in many ways. And then we were able to learn through that. And then hopefully we can become guides to some degree. So it's very much a conversation of core values, core beliefs, and core aspirations. Our core values are very similar. Our core beliefs are very similar. And our core aspirations are to have the most successful self-improvement podcast that we can have. We want to impact as many people as, as possible. The way we go about it may be different. The personalities, the energy, that may be different. But a really good partnership starts with what are we ultimately trying to accomplish? What is it that we are trying to accomplish? What are we willing to do to accomplish it? What are we not willing to do to accomplish it? And then what do you want your journey to look like? And what do I want my journey to look like? And how do we integrate those together? So ultimately for me, I got all of the benefits of external success, reverse engineering success, uh, somebody who is just a natural entrepreneur, a visionary leader. I got all the benefits of that. And I was able to help Alan understand people more with emotional intelligence and vulnerability. So I don't know how, I'm not, I'm not saying it's never happened, but I don't know two people like us that who, who have worked together for as long as we have, because it is a pain in the butt a lot for both of us. But we've had those moments where I really appreciate the pain in the butt now. Alan's late all the time. He's not late because he's sleeping in. He's late because he's doing other things that are moving the business. And I am productively paranoid where I'm thinking of what if it snows? What if it rains? What if this client cancels? That's not the way Alan thinks. And that's been a beautiful partnership for us because we have more of the basis covered than we would if we were doing it by ourselves. Love that too. As I mentioned, doing this on my own, I could see how that would be a huge benefit. Whereas if you guys were similar or alike, let's say how it would just not, it wouldn't be as refreshing, like listening to both aspects. I fall more on the personality of yourself, Kevin, to be honest with you. Right. So hearing Alan and then obviously interviewing Alan and getting to know Alan in a virtual sense from the podcast as well. It's been interesting because it's a complete contrast of how I think and how I am as well. <laughs> so I just try to put myself in those shoes. So congratulations on, on taking the step. It. Yeah. To make that happen. So let's rewind the story just a little bit. You had mentioned about how you had this job. It was going fantastic, meaning fantastic in the sense of you were making more money than you've ever made before. You had all the, the stuff, the things, you had the car, you had the girlfriend up until the day that she decided that she was going to leave you. Talk about that or go back to that moment where you made that decision when you were like, okay, something's got to change here. And I don't know what it is. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Right When you decided you're going to go out there and start the podcast and launch this entrepreneurial journey that you've been on since 2017, go back and talk, talk, to, uh, talk to us a little bit more about that. I remember the, the day, Randy, Alan and I were working out together in the gym. And the way my, my schedule was for work is some days we work first shift, some days we'd work second shift. There were times where I worked overnights in banks 
because the banks were open all day and we needed access to the entire building. So we were there with a security guard overnight. My schedule was set up that week where I was supposed to be working first shift. So I was going to be working seven to three. Alan and I were pouring a lot into the podcast at that point because we had decided to work together even though I was doing this other thing. And I remember we were working at a building and I called my bosses, my project manager, and I said, hey, just so you know, they're going to switch the schedule on us and we're going to have to work second shift and I can't do it. I have stuff scheduled for the rest of the week. One of those was a really big podcast with somebody who was a huge guest for us at the time. And I said, just so you know, I can't do second shift, but it's coming. They told me today it's coming. I know you don't know, but I do. So later that week, I ended up getting a call from the project manager and they said, all right, shift's changing. I need everybody working three to 11. And I said, I can't do it. I told you I can't, I will not do it. I'm not coming in from three to 11. I have stuff to do. So I remember I got a call the next week when I was in the gym and it was the project manager. And he said, so are you willing to do the new schedule this week or not? It's, it's three to 11. Are you willing to do it? And I said, no, I'm not willing to do it. And he said, all right, well, I think this is going to be a more serious conversation. And I said, it is what it is. At this point, I'm out. I don't care. I have this other thing. I can't be, I can't be jerked around like this anymore. So by the end of that conversation, it was determined that I was not going to be working there anymore. <laughs> and I, re I remember being outside the gym with Alan. And I remember this weight fell off my shoulders of, I know where I'm going to sleep now. I know I'm going to sleep in my bed for the foreseeable future. And I don't have to pack up a suitcase and live in a hotel. Oh my goodness. But it was very quickly replaced with, I also just lost all of my income and I only have $10,000 in the bank. The decision for me was, I actually finally feel like I found that mythical thing that people talk about, that whole purpose thing. I finally feel like I found that. And I don't think anybody else understands. I don't think my, my company gets that. Understandable, right? Their purpose is not my purpose. So it was very much that decision of I need to do what's best for me, regardless of how that looks, regardless of what feedback I get, regardless of what my family thinks. It was that. It was that courageous moment of saying, well, I have a business partner now, technically. We're already podcasting. I love this. And if I could do this for a living, my life would be tremendous. It would be tremendous. Transparently, I think in the beginning, I was naive to what this was going to take. I didn't think it was going to be nearly as hard as it was. And I didn't think it was going to take nearly as long as it's taken. I thought maybe a year or two and we'll be in like a year or two of dedication. This could be fine. But it took a lot longer than that. And we were talking about this, you and I, before. I said this on an episode recently. If you told me what it was going to take to get to where we are today, and I could go back and redecide, I don't know if I would have done it. I don't, I don't know what I, if I would have done it. There have been pieces of me that I have lost that I just will never get back because of the pressure, because of the stress, because of the anxiety, because of that. It's been a challenge for sure. I'm so grateful and I'm so blessed and I'm so privileged, but it has come with tolls that I didn't realize I was going to have to pay along the way. Well, let's see if we can unpack that a little bit more too. So yeah. can you talk about some of those things that, so I think like you said, and you said it perfectly, and, and I would say that I fell into that, that category as well. It's like you, you think of the freedom, you think of the time management, you know, you, you just get your time back, right? But you go from having a paycheck to zero really quickly. <laughs> I left my job, right? Voluntarily. Uh, it sounds like yours was a little bit, little bit involuntary, but at the same time, you were working towards that decision of getting there, uh, having things in place, having a plan pulled together. Like you said, it can be very stressful. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but yeah. Can you take us through, you mentioned about you had lost some of the things from within yourself and you're not sure if you would have, if you had to make the decision today, knowing how long it did take, talk to me about some of those things that you, you, uh, suffered from as far as going through this journey? Yeah. I left in 2018. And when I left my job, I lived with my best friend at the time, other than Alan. Alan's my best friend. And then Matt is my my other best friend. And I, I had moved in with him because he was renovating a house. It was a top and bottom duplex. And he said, dude, live in the bottom with me. 
we'll split rent and then we can renovate the upstairs and then I'll flip it. It's like, all right, that seems pretty cool. The key for me was I was going to be paying like 500 bucks a month in rent. All right, that's awesome. I knew that the the end date was coming with this job. So I was trying to leverage as much as I could to set myself up for success. So that was happening. And I just remember seeing the number in the bank account go down and down and down and seeing the credit card statements go up and up and up and up. So two years in, I'm $35,000 in credit card debt because we were still pouring into the business, right? I still have bills to pay. So my debt is just increasing. And here I am thinking I should be making money by now. Am I ever going to be able to pay this off? This, this could be a real challenge. 2019, actually, no, 2018 still, Alan and I went to a Brendan Burchard event. So we flew from the East Coast over to Arizona to do this, this event. That's all on credit cards, my credit cards, right? Flights, hotels, rentals, throw it on there. We'll figure that out later. But I went so far outside of my comfort zone so fast that I started having anxiety attacks. And I didn't know what it was. We flew down to Florida. We went straight from the airport. So, sorry, we went to Florida before we went to Arizona because one of our mentors lived down there. So we, we flew down to Florida, got off the plane, got in our rental car, drove to the gym because that's one of the things we do when we're on the road. We always exercise together. And I remember in the middle of my workout, I was, I was thinking to myself, my chest is tight. I, think, I don't know if it's asthma. I used to have asthma. I used to struggle with that. Maybe it's allergies. I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. We finished the workout. We go to the hotel. And I remember I, could, I just couldn't breathe. I could not breathe. And I remember calling my mom and I said, hey, I don't know if I'm having an anxiety attack. I don't know if I'm having an asthma attack. I don't know what to do. And she said, well, if you think you're having like an asthma episode, you need to go to the hospital. And I said, I don't have insurance. I'm not going to the hospital. I, I can't. I can't afford to go to the hospital. I genuinely can't. So Alan went out for me. He went to Rite Aid or something to get me Vicks Vapor Rub and who knows what else because I thought that was going <laughs> to fix the problem. I remember, Randy, I remember putting Vicks Vapor Rub on my lips so I could prove to myself that I could still breathe. Hmm. If you can smell it, you can breathe it. That mm -hmm. was my thought. At, when Alan left, I went into the bathroom and I had another... I had a panic attack. I remember lying on the floor in this hotel room and I, I had a moment where I said, I think I'm going to die here. I think this is it. So then I, then we fly across the country to Arizona and I'm still having the same symptoms. We go home and I spent like two weeks in bed thinking that I had allergies or I was having asthma attacks. And then I found that it was anxiety. Okay. Interesting. Then in 2019, I move in with my, my now wife when COVID started, we moved in together because I realized we weren't going to see each other if we didn't. And at that point, my car was junk. It was stalling at red lights. The brakes weren't working. I couldn't afford to pay my car insurance, so I got sent to collections. 2019 was the year I couldn't afford to buy Christmas presents for my girlfriend, now wife. I couldn't afford to pay rent. So she was very much the, the support system at that point. I couldn't afford to do any of that. So those are a couple examples of in the beginning, it was just, it was just kind of surviving. I don't, I don't know how to get to the end of the month. I'm trying to get to the end of the week. I'm trying to get to the end of the day. How do I do this? Why aren't we successful? Why do I feel like a failure? Why do I feel like an imposter? As much as it was external, there was a lot of internal stuff going on too of, I don't know if I'm good enough for this. I don't know if I'm ever going to be smart enough to be a successful entrepreneur. I don't know anything about business. I don't know anything about sales. I don't know anything about marketing. I don't know anything about speaking. How am I, how am I going to be successful at this? Did I make a giant mistake? That's really where I was a, a couple of years in the journey. So the mental health thing was, that was one of the hardest things. I had a, a thought recently where I, I thought to myself, I wonder if I would have anxiety if I wasn't an entrepreneur. I wonder if I would even have that. I, I don't think I would because I went too outside of my comfort zone too fast. And that is what I believe one of the symptoms of that, unfortunately. So those are a few examples of pieces of myself that I've traded in to get here. So 
that's fascinating. So I've got so many things going off in my mind. I'm trying to get them all straight before I start asking one question at a time. So the first one that comes to my mind though, is, is, you know, they say hindsight's 2020, right? So you're looking back now going through those experiences. I can say that I've had similar experiences as well. I was on an episode or I was interviewing someone the other day and they, they expressed to me and I completely agree. Jumping out into this entrepreneurial world is like the most impactful personal development, self-growth experiment you will ever do in your entire life. And it's like a hundred percent. If you're not working on yourself, it's going to be very difficult. So I guess the question I want to ask then looking back then in 2020 hindsight, right? Can you think of some things that you wish you would have done differently or that, you know, you would have done differently, uh, based on the experiences. And obviously now you're, you're, you're bridged to the other side, right? You're starting to see some of the fruits of the labor that you did back then, um, kind of help, you know, bridge that gap. Is there anything you might've uh, discovered that you wish you would have known then that you know now? Yeah, I would say number one, it's, it's mo- everything you expect is not your expectations. It's your desires. If you expect to make money in year one, it's most likely because you desire to make money in year one. It doesn't mean it's real and it doesn't mean it's going to happen. It might happen. But I would have told myself, everything you want is going to take longer than you expect. Really, really, really focus on working on you. Because you're the investment that will never really lose value. If anything, you can only increase the more and more and more you do this. That would be one thing. The other thing would be prepare yourself to be wildly misunderstood by most people. And really set yourself up to set some really strong boundaries. It's the old adage of, well, you're an entrepreneur, you make your own schedule. You can come out to lunch, you can come on vacation. It's quite the opposite. If I come out to lunch and I come out to vacation, I'm not making any money and I'm not going to be able to afford the lunch or the vacation. I'm blessed because I had some really supportive people in my life, but I had some people that just couldn't understand why I was doing what I was doing and they couldn't. Yeah, they couldn't uh, grow to that level with me. So that, another thing would be prepare to lose people. Hmm. Maybe not for everyone. I'm not saying everyone's going to, but for me, there are, out of all the friends and, and people I had back then, I probably talked to less than five on a regular basis. I only see one of my friends other than Alan on a consistent basis. And when I say consistent, I mean once every three months, maybe right that, but that again, that's kind of my choice. That's, that's my choice. I didn't expect that. I would also, this is kind of the biggest one for me. I think really prepare to have your ego poked and prodded and exposed because you're going to learn very quickly what you do not like about yourself and what you have to work on behind the scenes a lot of it for me was was comparison with Alan. I mean, imagine working with Alan every day. <laughs> imagine, I, as I mentioned, I I, I sympathize yeah. with you because I come, you know, I mean, my mentality and all that is very similar to yours. So yes, I, I, I yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, it's pretty intense. He's I'm sure. a yeah, he's he's very well educated. Mm-hmm. One of the best schools on the planet. I didn't go to college. Neither did. Oh, he I did a for a little while, but yeah, no, I didn't graduate by any means. Right, right. He's a math whiz and a math genius. I had to cheat to get to math to get through math class. <laughs> so a lot of it, a lot of the journey for me has been trying to fit in and then realizing that my superpowers are not being Alan Jr., they're being Kevin. It would, that would be a lesson I would give to all entrepreneurs. Don't focus on being like someone else. Focus on being more of you. That's how you're going to win. You're not going to win by being like me, like Alan, like Randy. You can take things from it and say, oh, that's your morning routine. Okay, that's your sales strategy, whatever. That's your time blocking. But your personality is unique and that's going to lend to your success as much as anything else. I wish I knew that earlier. I wish I knew that it's not about being like Alan. It's about taking lessons from Alan and then imparting them as wisdom on Kevin. That's probably the biggest thing that I wish I knew because that would have saved me a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of midlife crises, quarter life crises. That's it's still happening. But yeah, that would be a big one I'd give. 
Yeah, and I would agree with that one as well. As you begin to branch out, you see people doing certain things and you think that you need to do those things too or similar or the same. And you realize pretty quickly that that's no, you just need to figure out who you are and yeah. be comfortable with who you are, with your voice, with how you say things, with whatever that is, right? Yeah, I agree with that one 100%. So thank you for sharing that. Folks, you need to rewind that section there and just take that in. Listen to how he explained that because if you are uh, intrigued about becoming an entrepreneur, that's it's very tough to get beyond that. But if you can do it sooner rather than later, you'll be off to a bit, lot better start than I was or it sounds like, like you were as well, Kevin. For sure. So uh, let's go into a little bit about the consistency. As far as like, it sounds like you were struggling at the beginning. It made it sound like it was two, maybe even longer than that years in. You weren't necessarily seeing the results. You were struggling a little bit physically even, right? You're talking about having some issues with breathing and anxiety and all that kind of stuff. How were you able to keep going through those challenges? Because I think that that's where... You know, you, you see, hear the old analogy, right? Pumping, you know, well pump, right? You pump, pump, pump. You don't see any results for no results forever. And then all of a sudden you get to that final stage where you start to see some fruits of your labor. Talk to me about how you were able to keep going through all that adversity. One big piece is I had a business partner who had more belief than I did. And he, he said, just trust me, Kev. Just trust me. In five years, you're not going to even believe where we are. And he said, five years after that, you're definitely not going to. That was a big piece of it as crazy or naive for it was for me at the time to believe what Alan was saying. But this is what I always connected to. There's really three beliefs that humans must have to do anything. One, you must believe that it is humanly possible. So is it possible for me to jump off of this roof and survive? No one's ever done it. Eh, okay, maybe that ain't it. So it has to be humanly possible. It has to be personally possible. Is it possible for me? Where I am, the work I put in, all of that. Is it possible for me? And the big one that I think a lot of us miss out on leveraging is, will it be worth it? Hmm. I never believed, transparently, if I'm being honest and vulnerable, I never believed it was possible for me. But I did believe if I could survive long enough to get here, it would be worth it. That was always my belief. And I tell Alan to this day, I can't guarantee I'm going to last forever. But I promise I will tell you if I ever don't think it's worth it anymore. Until then, I'm going to keep doing whatever it takes and suffering and struggling and whatever it is. As long as I believe it's worth it, I'll do it. That's just, that's the way I'm, I'm wired. If the, if the promise is great enough, we will pay the price for it. That's, that's a deep belief I have. So that was a big piece of it is, if I stay on this train long enough, I'm going to be better off than I would be if I got off the train now. I had a very deep belief, Randy, that it was just my job not to screw this opportunity up for a long, long period of time. I thought to myself, just don't screw this up. Alan has had a lot of people that had the opportunity to work with him, but none of them have lasted. And then they end up villainizing him because I think they realized their life was better when he was in their corner, even though he is at times a pain in the butt. But it's a positive pain in the butt. So one, I had somebody who I really deeply believed in and I followed. I definitely followed him and said, I'm going to be humble enough to let you teach me what I don't know and then try to practice that. The other one was I had a deep belief that this would all be worth it. And then honestly... I was, although I was struggling in the external world, I was the most fulfilled I had ever been. When people would reach out and say, this episode was amazing and this helped me, that was something that I, I've always wanted to help people. Always. I've always wanted to help people. I just never knew how I was going to do it. Podcasting is the vehicle for me. Purpose is to be the type of person I needed. Whether that's on a podcast episode or a coaching call or on social media. I just want to be the type of person that I would have resonated with because I didn't resonate with all these successful people who said, just believe in yourself more. Thank you. I'm trying. I don't know how to do it. Teach me. Teach me how to do it. So that was a really big piece for me is, I don't know. I, I, don't, I won't say I let go of the results because I didn't. That would be a total lie if I said, well, I just let go of the expectation of results. But I started to understand that although I'm lacking in external results, I feel the most internally successful and fulfilled I ever have 
when the external results start to catch up, life's going to be really good. Really, really good. Because I'm starting to love myself and my self-worth is increasing and now I believe in what I'm capable of. Oh my goodness, that is wild for me. I actually feel like I'm evolving as a human being. So to your one of your original points, I have gotten more value out of this journey than anybody else. I don't care if you listen to every single one of our episodes. I've grown so much because I've learned so much in the process of doing it. That was also important to me. It wasn't always about the results. Sometimes it was, well, the byproduct of the, the chase is that I'm going to get really good at certain things. And I've never felt really good at most things. So that's kind of addictive. I have a cheat code to get better every day for the rest of my life. I think it would be very short-sighted for me to, to get rid of that. Love that. Appreciate you sharing that. That was awesome. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the discipline that it takes to stay in the grind. You mentioned that you were a bodybuilder and you won a competition back in the day, right? I, I'm not a uh, bodybuilder per se, but at the same time, I try to keep, take care of and pay attention to my fitness and things. But to know and to accomplish something like that is a huge accomplishment from a mental standpoint as well as physical so as I mentioned, you are also on your podcast. Currently, you guys are releasing episodes seven days a week. So folks catch that seven days per week. That's even over the weekends. When I first heard that, I was like, in the weekends too? Yeah, on the weekends too. <laughs> I produce currently two episodes a week. And that's a lot of work. Let's talk about the discipline it takes to number one, commit to doing that. And then stay in the course. 1,700 episodes in, all the accolades that come along with it. I read those off at the beginning. Let's talk about the discipline piece. That's always a hard one for me because we made a commitment very early on that we would never miss an episode and we will never miss an episode. I don't care. I don't, it's not even, this is why it's hard because it's really hard for me to explain. It's not even an option. Hmm. Has it it's always just, been, has it always been seven days a week from the beginning? No, 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 okay. no, no. In the very beginning when I started, I was missing episodes all over the place. Missing I was, for yourself? I, when you started, yeah, yeah. As a, was it a solo at the beginning and then you moved on with with Alan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when I think you were I by yourself, f- you were yeah. missing some? Okay. Yeah, I was all over the place. Yeah, yeah, I was all over the place. Alan and I partnered up, I think, like 15 episodes in. And then we went to like two episodes a week, and then three episodes a week, and then four, and then five. And then I think we said, we're at five. We might as well just do seven. Hmm. Uh, that was probably like three years ago. I think that was probably either two or th- three or four years ago when we started doing an episode every day. And we made a commitment that we will never miss. We're just never going to miss. But that's so ingrained in our business culture and in my identity at this point where we do a meetup every month. We will never miss. It's, it's already done. That's just how we do, we do business. We do group coaching once a quarter. It's just going to happen because we're not going to let that die. We're very good at starting things and not letting them die because that's just the culture of how we, we do things. It's not even really about the discipline because it's not an option not to do it. Hmm. I don't think it's I don't think it requires a ton of discipline to go to a job when you know if you don't go to the job you're going to get fired. That's not necessarily discipline, I think it's necessity more than anything. So I think there's for us there's more necessity because if I miss an episode, I am going to look like the world's biggest liar. It's in our intro, a new episode every single day. I've been on so many other podcasts where they say, you do an episode every single day. And I say, yes, I'm going to look like the biggest hypocrite if we don't do it. We just have a lot of baked in public accountability, which I think is a really good lesson for all of us. It's really hard to do stuff in private that nobody's going to see because if nobody's going to see, nobody cares if you don't do it. But you have to be the final line of, line of defense on that. And I would say building in ways to do that for you is personal. It, it depends. An example for me, just one that's not podcast connected necessarily. I was struggling with fitness maybe like a year ago. Business had grown a ton. I was struggling to keep up with everything. And I just kept letting myself down. And I was so frustrated with myself. And I went to my wife and I gave her a hundred dollar bill. And I said, I need you to do me a favor. And she said, yeah, what do you, what do you got? And I said, if I don't exercise every day this week, I need you to take this money and I need you to rip it up in front of me. And she said, absolutely not. not going to do that. And I said, babe, it's, it's done. I just needed to have the courage 
to create enough necessity to do it. It's it's not not going to happen. Now I'm not going to watch you rip that up in front of me. I exercise for the next seven days, and if I really wanted to exercise more, I would do that every week. Every week I would go to my wife and say, "Here's a hundred dollar bill. If I don't go to the gym X amount of times, rip that up." I think necessity is one of the reasons discipline is so hard. If you don't have necessity, you are re- requiring and you are relying purely on the discipline of, I know I'll be grateful if I do this, even though I don't want to do it now. And then I think there's also another layer, discipline versus design. If you wake up in the morning and your shoes are next to your bed and your AirPods are charged and you have your water bottle and you have your BCAAs and you have the clothes put out, it's a lot easier to be disciplined because it doesn't require as much discipline to get going. So every Monday from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. is blocked off on our calendar. And that's when we try to do as many episodes as possible so we can get ahead on the week. That's always going to be that way. So that's that's never coming off. You can't pay me. You can't book a, a call with me. That's always That's always blocked off. So I'm going to Europe in two weeks. So next week... Alan and I have to record 21 episodes. That's going to suck. Yeah, that's going to that's going to suck really bad. But there is that little piece of me that takes pride in the fact that it's going to suck. And then I'll be able to say, yeah, the most podcast episodes I've ever recorded in a week is 20 something. Right? There's a piece of me that I like that cuz I'm I'm proud of that cuz at one point I definitely didn't think that was possible for me. So, necessity, discipline, and design are I think kind of the an equation when you put them together. So how do the words have to versus need to, do those resonate with you at all? As far as the, the necessity piece, those are kind of the words that are coming to my mind as you're giving that explanation. Did anything come to mind with that? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm weird in that stuff. I think, I don't know if I'm at the transcendent place where that really matters that much to me. I know it can sound negative to say I have to record 21 episodes. I do get to, but I have to. Because if I don't, for me, it's more about I'm going to let myself down if I don't do it. That's why I have to do it. I, yeah, that, for me, that's that's what resonates with me because I don't necessarily think I have a negative relationship with it. If anything, I'm proud of the fact that I had to do it in order to go on vacation. I kind of like that. There's a little piece of me that enjoys the fact that I'm suffering for a cause. And while you're there enjoying the cause, you can obviously look back and reflect and realize that you did a great thing, right? That's super cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So let's pivot the conversation a little bit. I know you're super passionate about helping folks begin their journey as podcasters. Uh, As we've mentioned, uh, I don't know if I've said it on this podcast. I think I have. I have done so many. I always sometimes forget what I've said, what I haven't said, but I'm (laughs) a huge advocate for this platform, this type of platform. I love I learned so much from other podcasters in my journey that I felt like it was something that I, I wanted to do and I, and I love doing it. I actually enjoy the process, which is uh, super cool on top of that. But I know you have a big passion for y- yourself, right? You've gone through the reps, you've done the journey, you're obviously continuing the journey, but you're starting to reach your hand back and start helping guys and gals take their visions, take their ideas and package them in a podcast form. Can you start... Tell, tell us a little bit more about how, if someone's out there thinking, okay, I hear you, 1,700 episodes, that's a lot. Randy, you're doing two a week. That's still a lot. But I have, I want, I'm encouraged. I want to get started. What, hmm. what ideas do you have in mind for those folks out there that are, are wanting to see if they can do this too? I would say take the lowest barrier to entry to start. Don't worry about having the perfect camera. Don't worry about having the perfect mic. Don't worry about any of that. Strike while the iron is hot and while you're courageous because unfortunately, courage tends to leak. And when it does, I can't tell you, Randy, how many people I've connected with and I helped them start their podcast and they said, this is this is a year in the making. This is two years in the making. This is five years in the making. I'm not necessarily telling them anything they didn't already know. They feel guided and they feel extra necessity because there's someone there giving them a little a little gentle kick in the butt. So I would say get it started as soon as humanly possible and do it messy. Launching, launch is a sexy word that matters very little to most of us. If you don't have an audience of people that care that you're starting a podcast, don't worry about having the perfect launch strategy. It doesn't really matter that much. It just doesn't. 
I've launched top 15 shows that decided they don't want to continue a few weeks later. It doesn't matter. It was really good for the first two weeks, but then they decided, well, I don't know if this is for me. Okay, well, maybe we should have spent more time talking about that, and that's a that's a good lesson for me. So yeah, I would say start as soon as you can. YouTube, there's a million YouTube videos on what you need. Honestly, you probably need less than they're saying in the very beginning. I would say that's that's fair. And tap into why is it important for you? Why is why is you getting your mission, your message, your words, your voice, your experience, your story? Why is that important to you and why is it important to the people who are hearing it? Because I think we all unfortunately have those those moments of who am I? Who am I to talk about this? Who's going to want to listen to me? There's people that definitely want to listen to you. It might be more or less than you think. That that all depends. So that's another thing. And I think the the last thing that I would say that is kind of the opposite of what I hear all the time is it is tremendously hard to grow and to win and to turn into a business and to really make it something serious. I don't say that to dissuade anybody from starting. The reason I say that is because you're never going to see someone who has an ad that says, yeah, this will make your life a little bit easier. It's It doesn't work that way. Everybody's saying, I can help you do this, I can help you do this, I can help you do this. Most of them just aren't being truthful. I'm going to be very honest and very courageous and say that. I've launched a lot of shows. I've worked with hundreds of podcasters. The fundamentals are unsexy, but they work. And that's why you can't really package it into a course because it's not sexy and it... I can't guarantee you're going to grow a million listens in a day. So that, expect it to be harder than you believe and just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons because once you get going and you take a lesson from every episode and you say, wow, I feel more confident when I'm in front of the mic. I'm ready to get a camera now. I'm ready to be on camera. That's amazing and that's so much growth. But if you think you're going to be the next Joe Rogan, statistically, you're most likely not. And that's coming from the guy who wanted to be the next Joe Rogan and then realized that ain't going to happen. We're going to do it in our own unique, different way. That's super powerful as well. Just get started. I like how you said- Just get started. Yeah. The messy, the messy start, get started messy. So talk, just, I've got one, one last question. I know we're coming up on time here, but uh, one last question, and then I'm going to open the floor. I would just love for you to share some wisdom with everybody. The question I have then is pivots. So meaning- You've pivoted a few times within the, your podcast as well. So I, I feel a lot of times when I'm having conversations with, with folks about launching or getting started doing something, whether it's a podcast or even just going online and being you know interactive on social media, they get caught with, well, how do I do this? How do I, how, 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 how? Instead of, like you said, just launch messy and just pivot as you go. I love the word pivot. That's the word I use currently. Mm. How important is that to be able to be flexible enough, consistent enough to keep going, but flexible enough to kind of just weave and bob as needed to uh, to navigate the uncertainties that you don't you really even know what you're going to come up against. It's it's huge because to your point, if you don't know, and then you do something and you learn something new, you have a new opportunity to pivot in a different direction. We are always pivoting behind the scenes. We've pivoted. We've changed the name of the podcast. We've rebranded several times. We've changed the intro, we've changed the outro, we've changed our pricing, we've changed everything. Every single thing we have in the business has changed multiple times. And I think pivoting is necessary because you're going to change. At the end of the day, you're not going to be the same person in two years that you are today. It might seem like it, but you're not going to be. And you might not value things at the same level. Imagine if you start something and you're doing you're doing it a certain way and then you have a family. And family becomes a high priority as it should if that's something you value, you're going to have to pivot. Maybe you only do coaching calls on Thursday and you used to do them on every day. Maybe that's the way it goes. I think one of the reasons we're afraid to pivot, understandably so, is because it's really hard to pivot when you don't know exactly what you value. Because a pivot is just you deciding, I now value this more than I once did, let me lean into that direction and do less of this thing 
that I don't necessarily value, or I don't think it's going to work the same, or I don't want to do it in that way. So I think just as a business owner in general, great example, sad example, but great example. The companies in COVID that started doing contactless delivery are probably still in business. Many of the companies that didn't do that and said, well, we're just going to wait, unfortunately, probably aren't in business. And that was a huge pivot. And how many of us still get our pizza delivered, contactless, just leave it on the porch and I'll pay for it through the app? That's something that's going to live forever. It was a really big pivot. And sometimes pivot can become permanence depending on what industry and, and, and what you're doing with it. Yeah. Love that. Yep. Pivot is a huge word for me. Just want to leave that there with the listeners as well. Being okay with changing as you go, not stopping, not coming to a stop, just a small pivot and keep mm -hmm. moving forward. So man, I want to open the floor for a nugget of wisdom. You've shared oh, a ton. Boy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'll put you on the spot, a nugget but at the same wisdom. time, yeah, you've done this enough times. I'm sure you're going <laughs> to come up with something that's going to be super impactful, which is going to be super cool. But yes, yeah, share something with the folks that are listening today based on the conversation that we've had, uh, whether it's encouragement, some inspiration, and then when you're done, please let everybody know where they can connect with you, learn more about Next Level University, talk more about your podcasting, coaching and training, that type of thing. Yeah, take some time to do that as well, please. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, I would say for this specific topic, what we talked about, again, it sounds weird. It's one of my favorite quotes. I put the words in the order that I'm going to give them to you as, but I'm sure somebody in history has said this long before me in a different way. Your reality becomes the parts of your imagination that you hold onto and pour into the longest. For episode number seven of what was the hyperconscious podcast at the time, I remember I sat down in my living room and I pretty much vented about how I hated my job and how I felt like I was stuck in the rat race and how I felt like I was tra trading my life for something that I didn't really want. And my goal one day was to wake up when I want go to sleep when I want, spend time with amazing people when I want, podcast whenever I want, and be my own boss. And it took longer than I expected, for sure. But that is the one belief that I hung on to and I poured into every single day. Every single day, I try to get a little bit better. I'm not running marathons every day, but 10 pages, you're going to get better. Right? 10 pages on a Sunday is great. We love that. I just kept chasing that. And with that chase, I tried to just get a little bit better. I didn't expect to get any results beyond what I was capable of getting. But when you become more capable, you're capable of attracting and sustaining better results. So I think it's just that. We're all focused on something. And I think a lot of us, unfortunately, are just focused on things that don't matter or things that we don't want. If we can flip that script. What do you really, really, really want? Because in 10 years, your life is going to look different than it does today. It's either going to be by accident or by design. And I want for all of us to have as much influence on the design as possible because it's your life. And you get to, you get to live it every day or you have to live it every day based on your perspective. Get to, have to. I love that. I try to say that to myself all the time. I get to right? That's where it's, it's slight difference, but it's a huge mm -hmm. difference. Yeah. All right, man. Where can we, where can we get to know you? I know people out there like, okay, I need to get closer to Kevin. <laughs> Obviously he's got a ton of wisdom, things to share. Yeah. Where can we get to know you better at? Absolutely. I, I always say the podcast. So after you listen to, to Randy's two episodes a week, you can check out Next Level University. We do an episode every day, as you know, and it's very similar to this. It's just how can we help you level up your health, your wealth, your life, and your love based on what we're going through, based on what we've learned? So I think that's always the the best place. Questions, comments, concerns about podcasting or anything really, I'm, I'm always an open book. Anything I can do to add value, I'd love to. You can just shoot me an email, kevin at nextleveluniverse.com. And then I have another podcast called Podcast Growth University that is how to level up your podcast. So that's a another podcast that I have. I do an episode every week. And I think we're coming up on a hundred episodes, which is wild to me. So that's another free resource for podcasters out there. That's, and it's a very good resource. Thank Once you. again, as a, yeah, it is, it really is as a podcaster, the episodes I've caught have been 
fantastic. I mean, I've learned a lot already. So if you are an aspiring podcaster or have already started even with an, uh, a podcast, I mean, I'm hundred, almost 150 episodes in and I'm learning things from Kevin, which is super cool. Uh, the Next Level University is also fantastic. The dynamic between him and Alan, we talked about that a little bit earlier in the, in the episode, is super cool. You will probably relate with one person versus the other. That would be my guess. And But don't push away the other, right? As far as if one resonates with you, just listen to the other perspective and try to gain some wisdom and some knowledge about you can really start to see life in a different way and getting to know Alan a little bit with the episode that we did, but then obviously listening to him every day, seven days a week has also been a lot of fun as well. So work towards, you know, the takeaways from this episode for me were work towards building in some necessities in your life. I, I hadn't really even thought of it in that way before. Uh, that's super cool. I'm going to learn and work towards trying to build in some necessities, more necessities into my life. I feel like I'm pretty good at that, but I think I have some different areas of growth for myself. So I'd love to hear your feedback for this episode. Please feel free to reach out to me. You can also leave us a, a review on the podcast platform of your choice. Uh, you can reach me at Randy at RandyWilsonOnline.com and let us know what you think. Uh, but definitely go out there, follow Kevin, follow Alan get into the next level university uh, ecosystem and start learning how to, you can grow and become more in your life every single day. So folks, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your attention and uh, hopefully you will have a fantastic day moving forward. So go out there, focus on being great. I look forward to bringing back the next guest again very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.